I would say the IDW team can do better than that, but... Whoa, 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 buddy. Now that's just too far. This is just ass writing at this point. There's no defense for this. This entire miniseries should have ended at issue one. IDW, what the... What is happening, thotties? My name is Cody Tang. We're back again to enjoy the IDW miniseries, Bad Guys. I've still caught a little bit of the affliction, and I haven't uh, improved yet. Uh, it might get worse, it might get better, I don't know. But uh, this will this will be my voice temporarily until things improve. Now I know, this is a comic about Dr. Starline, and last time I talked about Dr. Eggman. So with this one, we're gonna do some more of that. As a quick disclaimer for anybody new, please avoid posting spoilers in the comments below as it is my first time experiencing the IDW series. But with all that said, let's get into some Sonic comics. Issue 3. Starline enters his password onto his computer, inputting a voice print as well and turning the volume low. He replays the last development journal, and the video log reveals that his tricore will be able to utilize its abilities hundreds of times, while the power cores that he'll be giving to Zavok and the rest will only be capable of being used a very few amount of times. Starline further explains that the Tricore will allow him to hold his own against Tails, Knuckles, and even Sonic the Hedgehog. He then goes over his plan for Phase 2, in which he will be shifting Egg Base Sigma to his control, and how he plans to dispose of the other members of the bad guys. While watching this video log, Zavok arrives, to which it's revealed that the Starline we've been following has actually been Mimic all along, and the real Starline is sleeping mere feet from the two. Here they realize that Starline has been planning to get rid of them all along. However, Zavok stops Mimic from stabbing Starline's sleeping body up, and instead instructs him to wait until Phase 2 is done. On the way to the base, it appears that everybody is getting along, which Starline is pleased with. Bro, the way that Tumble looks at Zavok is wild. He really thought he did something with that little rhyme scheme he made for the bad guys. Once they arrive at the Eggnet Hub, Starline passes out the cores for each member, explaining that they'll attach to a person's biosignatures and enhance their powers. All the gang have to do is act as they normally would, and the core will do the rest. So, Tumble and Zavok are super strong now, Ruff can run fast, and Mimic can... FLY?! What the f*** is that hair trick Mimic just did?! Eventually, the bad guys get into the base, and Starline launches his... Uh, security bypass algorithm. <laughs> I got something to say about that. Starline reveals that Eggman is fully aware that they're attacking the base, and that Eggman has been aware of this for a while. However, Starline is going to continue pretending that Sonic is doing all this, and give Eggman a completely separate facility for him to attack. So, as Eggman is about to head out, Orbot comes in and informs him that Sonic is at an entirely different base. So Eggman is just like, whatever bro, I'm just gonna carpet bomb them both. <laughs> What? Excuse me, what? I, I guess I have to make a comment about that too. No, this this actually can't be real. This, that, those two things did not just happen. So anyway, Eggman heads off to carpet bomb both bases and deal with the aftermath of Sonic's dead body later. That's what he says. That's, that's literally what he's saying. Now that Starline's plan is basically done, Mimic and Zavok finally unleash their counter plan to Starline. Zavok reveals to Rough and Tumble Starline's true intentions, and now Starline has nobody on his side. Mimic forces Starline to delete his record from Eggman's files, and Zavok forces Starline to give him command of the Eggnet hub they're at. With Starline kicked out of the bad guy's crew, Starline's clock is running out. Well, well, well. So, Eggman is suddenly perfectly fine with carpet bombing Sonic. That's interesting, IDW team. I guess you all forgot that Eggman would never do such a thing to Sonic according to you. Let's, uh, let's actually read the exact thing that Eggman even says. How about that? 
Yep, here we are right here. Issue 14 of the main IDW series. How dare you, Eggman said as he slammed Dr. Starline into a glass casing. But he's gone now. He can't get in the way of our plans, Starline said in reference to just allegedly killing Sonic the Hedgehog. The Hedgehog is mine to destroy. It's not the job of some upstart like you, Eggman replied in a fit of rage and continued. I could carpet bomb him any day. That's not enough. That's not the point. I have to beat him. I have to prove I'm superior. There's a right and a wrong way to vanquish your lifelong nemesis and you did it very, very wrong. I'm sorry, sir, Starline said, and Eggman relinquished his grip and threw Starline to the floor. You should be. Don't let it happen again. Okay? So now let's compare that to what just happened in Bad Guys, okay? Issue 3 of Bad Guys. Something's not right here, Eggman said as he looked over the new report that Orbot gave him. That's too much of a mistake to be a simple glitch. Perhaps Tails sent a dummy transmission and our network corrected the mistake, Orbot replied. Or the other way around and he's trying to throw me off the trail. No matter, I'll check out both, rain fire, and sift through the ashes later. I've got you this time, Sonic! IDW, what the f***? Are you guys not rereading your own material? Was that your attempt at a retcon? Eggman no longer feels that way or... Oh, 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 wait, wait. Of course, when Eggman doesn't necessarily know where Sonic is, it's perfectly fine to launch nukes at where he's expected to be. But if Eggman is looking right at Sonic and knows he can't go anywhere, Whoa, 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 buddy. Now that's just too far. Eggman will only completely decimate Sonic if he can't see it happen. Duh. Oh, it's so obvious. Anyway, uh, there was a neat use of Mimic at the start of this issue. For once, he actually used his shape-shifting properly. Although I will say that it's pretty wild that Starline didn't wake up to the sudden bright light nor the whispering of his own voice, or even Zavok not whispering. I also like the fact that Mimic was just going to straight up waste Dr. Starline right there. Of course, Zavok took away that moment. That kind of shows that Mimic is ready to kill for an inconvenience without thought, but will also listen to those he sees as his superiors. There's also a bit of confirmation bias in this issue from Mimic, since he appears to trust Zavok more than Dr. Starline. Mimic thought he was smart enough to tell that Starline had a trick up his sleeve, but he was oblivious to the fact that Zavok was giving the same exact shtick. And it's also entirely possible that Mimic had no idea that Starline was going to betray them, and he just kind of said that so that he'd have a reason to kill him. It's also kind of dumb that uh, when Mimic does have Starline right by the throat, he just kind of backs off. I mean, Starline gave them everything they wanted. Mimic's erased, and Zavok now owns the Eggnet Hub. I get that we can't just flat out kill Dr. Starline, you know, his story's gotta go somewhere, and he was in issue 33, but I mean, come on guys, you couldn't come up with something better than Mimic just for no reason at all, pulls away the knife from Dr. Starline and allows him to grab the Tricor. I would say the IDW team can do better than that, but with their track record so far, I'd be lying. You know, if Starline is so untrusting of this entire crew, he should probably be locking his doors, but then again, maybe the door was locked and Mimic just got past that too. I also find it interesting that Starline doesn't have a single security camera in his entire base. Not even on his own badniks. He apparently doesn't have anything prepped capable of catching the fact that both Zavok and Mimic just walked right out of his bedroom and into the outside area of the base. I find that to be highly unbelievable. Speaking of the crew and Starline, this entire miniseries should have ended at issue 1. There is absolutely no reason as to why Starline doesn't already have Egg Bay Sigma right now. See, in this issue, Starline says that he has been developing something to bypass Eggman's security while working on another project. So, 
then why did he try to use his password that first time? He could have just used the bypass security coding. Starline does not say that he made the bypass for the Eggnet Hub base. In fact, he says something completely irrelevant of the base. Starline specifically states that he made this bypass while developing his other project. His other project is not the Tricore. What he's referencing are these pods right here. Starline has had this code since before issue one of Bad Guys. Again, IDW, are you guys not reading your own material? Is nobody proofreading anything that gets released for continuity errors? Where are the editors at? Are you guys just not doing your jobs? Bro, I'm reading the comic and that was the first thing that I thought about. You guys are editing and fine tuning it and you missed this? <laughs> oh well, I guess, right? The way that everybody gains their powers is definitely something. They're all given an ounce of power that allow them to act like the heroes and utilize their energy. Ruff is acting like Sonic in both his ability to run and use his fur as a weapon, Mimic can fly or at least jump extremely far, and Tumble and Zavok have gained even more power than they had before. Now, Starline makes the claim that the cores will basically latch to each character's biosignatures and react seamlessly to them. Okay, so obviously this must be only half true because Starline has a tricore that can do all three and Eggman used these power cores for machines. So biosignatures are clearly not a key part to using these things. These cores also don't seem to only enhance somebody's bio output, they actually seem to straight up grant people these powers, rather than just focus on what each character can actually do. I'm just wondering just what exactly do these cores do to somebody? Now the colors must play a major role as they consistently deliver on a specific power. We'll look toward Mimic who is the biggest outlier here. There's really no reason that he should be able to fly. Nothing in his character even suggested the idea was possible until he obtained the yellow core. And then he just starts levitating and boosting around in the sky. As we'll see in the next issue, Starline has even enhanced his core to be stronger than a regular red core as he completely matches Tumble's blow. So, just a suggestion, if we were to give the blue core to somebody like, say, Blaze, could these cores give her speed that matches, if not outpaces even Sonic when he's trying? Or we grant the red cores to Cream? Could we potentially enhance her strength to match even Knuckles? These cores really need to be explored and expanded upon, because seriously, what the hell are these things? And Starline has tons of these cores. Could you imagine if there were a team of Starlines that utilized these things? Nobody would be safe. You know, seeing how all of the bad guys work together and interact makes me believe that, honestly, they all might have actually worked out if Starline wasn't such a screw-up. The major loose end would have been Zavok. It's clear that he doesn't have any desire to stick with anybody other than the Deadly Six. But Ruff and Tumble would be down for anything, so they'd be the most loyal and just happy to be along for the ride, while Mimic could be persuaded if Dr. Starline proved to be more capable than Eggman. It seems that Mimic's entire goal is just to live, and if he wants to get revenge on Whisper and Tangle, Starline is one of the largest options in that matter. Starline is just way too quick to denounce the entire group in favor of the infinitely less capable Dr. Eggman. I find it absolutely batshit insane how Eggman has absolutely no security for the Eggnet hub. Need I remind you, if this place is ever taken over, that means that he who holds the keys also holds a huge chunk of Eggman's entire empire. Can Eggman get a super bad nick here? Maybe a few? Uh, maybe, you know, put this Eggnet hub in, oh, I don't know, inside of an actual base? Why is it just sitting out in the open like this? 
This absolutely tops the lack of EM defenses on Eggman's robots. What is the reason that the Eggnet Hub would be one of the least protected places of Eggman's empire? They didn't even need the power cores to break in, they could have just fought these guys without them. Eggman basically just has the keys to his kingdom out in the open for anybody to stumble upon, with its only line of defense being a few generic badniks that anybody capable can just one-shot and that's it. That's all that's stopping you from owning half of Eggman's empire yourself. Starline made it a point that they had to get the power cores in order to even attempt to attack this base. Nobody is questioning why this place has little to no resistance. I guess it doesn't matter since they betray Starline in the end, but seriously, every single person here, especially Dr. Starline, should take note that Eggman has no defenses for the Eggnet hubs. This is actually insane. I find it absolutely impossible to believe that Eggman is this incompetent. It genuinely cannot be true. This is just ass writing at this point. There's no defense for this. Eggman Empire. Have you heard of it? No, clearly you haven't, you stupid mother. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you've been enjoying the video. Leave a comment below about your feelings on this miniseries, and we can go back and forth about why Eggman should be one of the most feared villains in the universe. Now back to the video. Issue 4 The entire bad guys encircle Starline, ready to do who knows what but then in the nick of time starline equips his tricor from his inventory and he's out yup they really just let starline poke into his pockets and slap that thing on while staring right at him now the game becomes a hunt for Starline, with Zavok, Ruff, and Tumble heading to go find him, while Mimic is ordered to stay back. However, Mimic has other plans, and agrees with Starline about getting rid of the crew. So, Mimic brings Eggman right down on everybody. From there, Eggman can see Zavok on camera, and he turns his ship around to the Eggnet Hub, smashing the illusion that Sonic was behind this all along. Ruff manages to find Starline, but Starline defeats him with his paralysis kicks. Starline tells him he'll kick him again, but Ruff starts shouting that he found Starline, so Starline dips out. Starline gives an empty threat to Ruff by saying he'll do even worse than immobilize him, and then decides that he should run away when Ruff literally tells on him. Classic Starline logic. Zabok is unable to find Starline, so Starline takes the chance to go back to his computer room, and on the way he sees Tumble, and he hits Tumble with a double toxin. Does that mean he's dead? No? Okay, well, Starline arrives back at the control room, wary to enter because Mimic may be near, and he heard that he was told to guard the area, which, I'ma be real, I doubt that Starline would have heard that, but okay. Regardless, Starline is able to finally give Eggbay Sigma over to himself entirely, deleting every trace of Eggman and replacing it to serve him. Then he zips out of the base. Zabok goes on the hunt to find Starline himself rather than rely on Rough and Tumble, and he comes to realize that Mimic has abandoned them. He's instead greeted by Eggman and, uh, as Eggman descends onto the Eggnet Hub, I guess Zavok just becomes computer savvy. Well, in this case, it would be egg tech savvy, as Zavok taps away at the oversized futuristic keyboard with dozens of buttons on it. So the base is destroyed with everyone creating new goals for themselves. Eggman tries to figure out why Zavok was there, noting that Zavok isn't tech savvy and would have no idea how the power cores would work, much less would he even know where they were located. Wait, Zavok isn't tech savvy? He doesn't know anything about your infrastructure? Well damn, was there some hyper enhanced training I missed for Zavok? Because what the hell was this then? Did he not just type in a bunch of commands for Eggman's tech right there? Anyway, Eggman plans to figure out just who got that band of villains together 
as it's clear to him that it was never Sonic and Tails. It's probably Starline, Eggman. It's, pro it's probably Starline. Dr. Starline. I don't know why that's not his first guess. It's not even a mystery to the audience. This is just Eggman not, not knowing who the f*** he's met so far. At the new Starline Central Command, originally Egg Base Sigma, Starline begins his complete rebranding. And so dawns the true first day of the Starline Empire. No, bro, he had it. Starline had it all for just a moment. A solid start to his empire. Even one where he can leave amicably with Zavok. Help him find the Deadly Six and leave on good terms. Water under the bridge type stuff. Even so, the idea of this is a good arc for Starline. It gets him where I have always wanted him. An independent person working against the world for his own gain rather than for Dr. Egg man and he even has his own official base to start himself out although speaking of that base the eggnet hub base being destroyed does that mean that a chunk of eggman's army are just kind of running around without any direction i mean the the source of their connection to the base and the empire was just destroyed it's gone so how's he gonna get all that back furthermore wouldn't starline now just lose all access to the egg base sigma you know what actually how would starline have control of the egg base sigma without the eggnet hub does starline have a starnet hub or something somewhere did he somehow reroute everything to him magically wait none of that actually makes any sense how would he have control of egg base sigma the base should actually be entirely offline now oh well i guess right Starline's entire thing was that he himself was too weak to really act out on his own, so he devised a plan that allowed him to do everything he wants by himself. That's a great idea. It's great to have the confidence to do everything you need by yourself. However, Starline can't be everywhere at once. So having a large team under his command would circumvent him ever needing to try and do that. By having a team, it allows him to only focus on what he actually needs in each area of research that he plans to go down while assigning teams to obtain the rest. But again, since Starline completely screwed up that entire thing, I guess he has the egg pawns to help him instead. It's interesting to learn that the cores Starline gave out to everybody are actually working at their full capacity, but then Rough and Tumble's cores give out relatively fast. Really, this is such an exponential jump for Starline to be capable of using the Tricore to a near unlimited rate, if not flat out unlimited. I suppose I don't really need the exact specifics of how it all works, but I'd like some sort of implication as to how his Tricore is so much more powerful than everybody else's. Would it even make sense that packing the thing with power cores would just magically make it better? I feel like that would actually end up overloading the thing. You know, speaking of Starline's abilities, why doesn't he just use his paralysis on everybody? He even had both Rouge and Tails at one point, all tied up and everything. Yet, he didn't use it on them. He just let them wake up after knocking them out. It's pretty useless. I mean, imagine the heroes having to carry Rouge and Tails everywhere while battling Dr. Starline, who can now run, fly, and punch as well as the majority of the crew. Yeah, good luck getting Tails and Rouge back then. But like I said in the last video, every single villain is an idiot, so nobody's going to do anything that even seems a little bit smart. I do have some expectations for Mimic. Before in his miniseries, he was extremely self-serving, and he still is that, but now he doesn't have Eggman looming over him, and he can kind of decide for himself for once. Although with his track record of how he uses his shapeshifting, he'll probably be outed within the first month of trying to go after Tangle and Whisper. Unless he can kind of kill a brand new restoration member that nobody really knows about, I don't see Mimic getting very far at all in the restoration or any closer to Tangle and Whisper without immediately letting everybody know, hey, I'm pretending to be somebody else. He still has absolutely nothing going for him, and he literally just 
cut off everybody in the bad guys crew by throwing Eggman at him. So it's kind of interesting how he did that twice just now. Once with the diamond cutters and now again with the bad guys. The only people that would have possibly been on his side. He says that they're a liability to be with, but I don't think you have any other option, Mimic. Otherwise, you're out in the world alone. Oh well, he has all the freedom in the world now thanks to Dr. Starline, so I am curious to see what type of revenge he's going to be launching on Tangle and Whisper. Also, can I just briefly note how the security for both Eggman and Starline is so ridiculously laughable in all four of these issues? The entire IDW team in control of this miniseries clearly have no understanding of security in any form. Not physical, not visual, nor digital. There's no possible way that nobody in the team didn't consider all of these security comments I'm making. I keep slinging them at them, unless none of them even know what the word security even means. This shit is actually just dumb. This story had something that most of IDW has to run without, and that's character development. Development and character exploration for just about each and every character on screen even. Everything shown here should be leading to something else in a major way, so I'll be expecting payoffs for each character shown off here. I'm also very happy that Starline is finally fully committing to the fact that he can create a more superior empire than Dr. Eggman. He knows everything Dr. Eggman screws up on, and he knows most of Dr. Eggman's actual security and the way that he deals with his robots. The only thing holding Dr. Starline back is the fact that he's Dr. Starline. I'm sitting here waiting for him to prove himself. Hopefully Starline's IQ is going to be given a massive boost as he stops wondering what everybody else thinks of him and instead focuses on what he thinks of himself. We haven't gotten any hints on what Starline's been cloning back there, but luckily we're jumping right back into the next few issues of the IDW saga when we pick it back up in the main series next time. Don't go anywhere yet! I've got something I need to tell you. The era of the Cody Tang Discord server is now! Whether you want to simp over the hottest Sonic characters, or you're trying to express why Jules' concept art design was what they should have went with, we've got that and so much more in the server. Head down to the description below, create a Discord account, and become part of the Eggman Empire. Your new life awaits. The moral we can all get from this is that Starline does nothing but take L's. And that will never change. But I could be wrong, Starline is developing. He can go from a lame villain to a pretty impressive one. Maybe. I'm giving that man a chance. He doesn't have a clean slate, but we'll see if he can write all of his extreme oversights going forward. Like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, join the Eggman Empire Discord, okay, bye!